Hello everyone, this is Clone Plays, and welcome to another video. This is going to be a change for this week, as I'll actually be able to upload two videos this week. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone. Uh, today's video is special because today that I'm filming is Christmas Day, and so uh, my family's Christmas celebration has now been completed, and the gifts have been given out. So I just wanted to show you all what I got for Christmas. Later this week, I will have another special video, most likely next week actually, showcasing something else my father and I were doing while uh, the Christmas break was going on, but unfortunately just were not finished in time for uh, Christmas Day. So, just as a brief overview, here are what the physical things look like. I did get lots of Star Wars video games for Christmas this year, which was awesome due to a Steam sale that was going on around Thanksgiving. Um, those I will not include in this video to showcase because that'd be a little boring, I think. <laughs> so over the course of next year, you will all be able to learn what those games are. Now, going back to these physical things, so starting from the smallest pile and working our way up, these two bags I got from one of the secondhand Lego shops in my state. There's a bunch of stormtroopers, there's a couple, uh, there's like one clone in there. There's a bunch of minifigure related stuff, like a bunch of heads and things. This bag is just full of random parts that my mother and I, when we went there, collected and just put into the bag. And there's some cool uh, printed and stickered parts that actually look really nice. <laughs> and then just a bunch of other parts in general that we just, I scooped up in, in, into my hand and put in the bag. Uh, moving up. This was the advent calendar that I was doing from December 1st to December 24th. I don't remember which year it came out, but I believe it was around 2016 because one of the uh, minifigures that you build in this set clearly shows one of the uh, minifigures from the Rogue One wave of sets. So, and those came out in 2016, around that, around that period of time. So, that's when I think this came out. Other than that, I don't know. <laughs> but moving on to the last big two boxes, as you can see, got two more Acro Mill containers. One of these are the large drawer style. So back here as an example, these are the small drawers. One of these has the large drawers, and I think this one actually is the small drawer. So. It'll be my first small drawer, actually, and my third large drawer. Because the other two that I'm using uh, to store my plates in are the large style. So, I'm very excited. I'm glad I was able to find a cool deal. Uh, also around Thanksgiving time, for like the Black, uh, Black Friday sales or whatnot. Been able to find a deal that had two of these. The only thing that would have made this deal better is if it was two of the large drawer style, but... I'm not complaining that people just have two. Uh, I did have to make space, so those other two Acromo containers are actually over there now. And these two will most likely hang out right here for uh, a long period of time <laughs> until I can make some other adjustments into this room. But So how the rest of this video will go, most likely, is I'll show you all what, hap what uh, is contained within the advent calendar. Then I'll show you what's going on with these bags. Then I'll show you what these boxes look like when they're opened. That way I can actually figure out which one is the small and which one's large. So give me one second, I'll be right back. All right, so that is take a closer look at the advent calendar that I was doing for uh, this December. So starting with day number one, it is, if I can get it out, is the slave one. I'm really impressed with this, and I thought it was a really awesome build for day number one. Day number two was the first minifigure, and it's a Bespin Guard. Pretty good minifigure. I think it's the only Bespin Guard uh, minifigure I have, so awesome find. I really like his hat. <laughs> Moving on to number three, which is the second mini build. We have a TIE Interceptor. Really nice, had some cool extra parts to it, like an extra minifigure bracket part to make a backpack with on to like a clone or something. So always nice to get those kind of extra parts. Day number four 
I apparently forgotten how many minifigures were in this. Day number four was also another minifigure. It is a Death Star Trooper, I want to say. I don't know, there's like two different variants of the Dar Death Star Trooper. There's the one with the helmet that doesn't show his face, and there's the one that, like this one, that shows his face. So, I'm not sure which one, it, which one is actually the Death Star Trooper, or both of them are. But it was nice to get another Death Star Trooper, just as another Imperial uh, officer. Day number five, there it is. Day number five was an interesting one. If I can tell, this is supposed to be on Hoth, and this is one of those uh, larger turret mount, uh, placements that the Rebels had. This is typically seen a lot in a lot of Hoth uh, play sets that LEGO makes. Uh, so it's actually one of my favorite Hoth turrets that the Rebels used during that uh, scene in Empire Strikes Back. So I think this looks pretty good. The only problem, of course, it suffers from is there's this huge gap you can see because of the uh, unique lightsaber part they use. Like the uh, lightsaber part they use for uh, Kylo Ren's lightsaber, but this isn't great. So... That's the only problem I have with that. Also because I just didn't know what it was at first. <laughs> but now that I somewhat know what it is, it's it's still, it's pretty good. Moving on to day six, which also has a very awesome minifigure bracket uh, extra part, is we got a, snow, a new snow trooper. And this is in the new style, so the helmet and the backpack are two separate things, which is awesome. Because as much as I like... Uh, how detailed actually the old backpack was and how much more accurate it is because of its size uh, The new helmet mold is a whole lot more accurate and a lot better. Sorry for that uh, the camera going in 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 and out of focus there uh, Yeah, I really like the snow trooper that makes I Think four of the new style that I have so that is awesome. I hope to be able to get more uh, I believe that means we're now on day seven I almost just forgot what day I, uh, I've been uh, pulling the stuff out of. Day number seven was an interesting one. I don't know. I believe it's one of the builds that you can see on the box. But it's the Imperial Snowman and his snow gun. <laughs> Which, I really like this. I'm not sure if we've ever gotten this uh, armored hat in white before. So that's actually really awesome. And the snowman build is kind of hilarious looking so I, I find that funny it does have a stud shooter but i mean it actually makes sense that there's a stud shooter here because how else is the snowman going to be able to shoot snowballs so i like it this is probably one of my favorite builds in the uh in the thing all right day number eight also by the way day number seven snowman build had a lot of extra parts which was nice but yeah day number eight is yet another hoth turret I want to say, it's probably been seen on other places besides Hoth, but I can only remember this one, this one from Hoth. And it's this turret, which is awesome because I actually do need some more turrets. I disassembled all the ones that I had made that were like, quote unquote, custom, because I designed them. Uh, but I had designed those a long time ago and didn't really look at uh, reference images. So I wasn't going off of the sources themselves, truly. I think this one does a really good job. However, when I tried to look it up on Wikipedia to figure out what the name of this cannon is, I ended up instead getting the name for this cannon. So I don't actually know what this one's called, but that's that's all right. I still like it. I think I'm going to end up using it and keeping this build out of the other ones. Day number nine is yet another Hoth-related minifigure. We now have a Rebel. I think this is just a Rebel officer in Hoth uh, clothing. Really like it. It's a really... It looks really accurate to uh, how the Hoth Troopers look for the Rebels. And there's only a few extra parts for this one, including this uh, the uh, goggles. That's the word I'm looking for, the goggles that they use. So, pretty, really nice. Yeah, another Hoth Trooper I can add to that scene whenever I build that battle as a mock. Let's see, we were now on day number... 10 I want to say yeah day number 10 just have to double check day number 10 was a really nice one too it's a yet another one of my favorite builds we got a Venator which is really nice 
only I think it uses like almost the least amount of parts for the builds besides like the snowman and stuff and this other one but this pretty much captures what a Venator looks like so I'm really impressed with it my only problem with it is because day 10 is in the top left corner here every time I move this box around to different spots of my house or in this room on this table this would always slide out that's the only issue I have with the the Venator let me see if I can find the spot too there we go all right day number 11 was another interesting one. We actually got a micro scale, I want to say, AAT uh, armored assault tank. This one looks really nice. Doesn't suffer from the issues that we've gotten from the playset versions recently. Um, my only issue, my only issue with it is this cannon seems way too long, but that's just because they're using a four long bra uh, blade or bar rather, and they didn't add like the any detailing for where like the battle droid commander would sit it's just straight cannon all cannon so that's my only issue with it it's still it's still really nice all right day 12 day 12 was an as an, an interesting one i didn't realize like it would ever do one of these for the advent calendar but it's the droid gunship or the hmp platform i think i just said platform twice though because i think that's what the p stands for but yeah this was interesting there's not a whole lot going on with it, though. It has very few parts to make this ship look like the way it's supposed to in micro so that's pretty nice. I think my only issue with it is I feel like these eyes, I think they're supposed to be eyes, seem really far away from uh, the main body of this droid. That's my, yeah, that's my only issue with that one. Uh, day 13... There it is. Day 13 is a standard, it seems. We just got a battle droid. Pretty nice. I don't need, actually, any more battle droids unless I feel like I need to collect a whole lot more. But this guy will either be ended up used as extra parts, then, or to repair battle droids who end up with, like, broken arms and things. So it's still really nice. Got another one of these blasters. I don't... Don't plan on ever using these ever again if I can help it, but it's always nice to be able to get blasters and not stud shooters on your minifigures. Day 14, I th if I remember right, was an interesting one as well. Yes, we have Obi-Wan's uh, Jedi Fighter. I'm assuming it's Obi-Wan's though, at least, because it has the dark red. I don't know if anyone else is, at least in the movies, had dark red. I believe in the Clone Wars show, Ahsoka has some dark red uh, paint on it, but this is most definitely Obi-Wan's from Episode 2. It was really nice. Again, it uses very few parts to actually make the shape. The only thing I found that was weird were these cheese slopes. They're supposed to be this way. I would have figured they were supposed to have been like that, but that's not how LEGO has it. Uh, built on the uh, door so it was very interesting to find Lego did it that way uh day 15 i believe was another minifigure oh no it was yet another build so we might not see another minifigure for a little bit but i believe this is supposed to be the 10 to 4 excuse me uh yeah i believe this is supposed to be the 10 to 4 it's all right I, it just seems too long for some reason. Maybe it's just because of the gap created by this hinge connection right there that's doing that for me, but it just seems a bit too long, and then this seems too wide, but you can only do so much with Lego parts in this size, so I can understand this, but the length just seems a bit weird. All right, day 16. Where is day 16? There it is, right behind. Okay. I just said we'd not seen another minifigure for a while, and I was wrong. Apologize, I just knocked over all those minifigures back there, but we got the protocol droid. I believe this is the one from the Phantom Menace that uh, guides Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi into a trap, unbeknownst to the protocol droid. <laughs> um... I don't remember its name. It's either that one or this is the other. This is a uh, the protocol droid that shows up in uh, the Empire Strikes Back. 
because I believe that one is also a silver slash chrome color. So it's really nice. Glad to have another protocol droid. You can never have too many protocol droids or astromechs of different colors and stuff. They really will make your mocks feel more alive, yet they're droids. It'll make them feel way more alive, though, because you'll just have, like, background characters doing stuff. Uh, I believe we're now on day 17. I almost just, again, forgot where we are. And this is, again, one of my favorites. We have a brown gonk droid. And I really like this. My th my only thing with this, I feel like going 2 by 3 might be a little too wide for a gonk droid. But besides that, I really like this. And I will definitely be keeping this build together. Because I will just be using this gonk droid in different mocks. I found a custom built gonk droid on the internet years ago and I've kept that one together and it was in a blue and white scheme and it's about the same, uses the same kind of build that this one does so yeah like I said I'll definitely be keeping this and I will probably eventually be making the uh, the other gonk droid, I don't remember the, what name it has for that one but it's it's got four feet instead of two so uh, that'll be an interesting one to do on a uh, building stream. All right, day number 18, we have a, another uh, scene built micro. We have Java's Palace. It was interesting to uh, build this one because if I remember it, yeah. Day 18, this is day 18's build is also the same day that the season finale of season two of The Mandalorian came out. And so this was very interesting to see both in Lego and in that show. So really cool. It captures that scene that you see multiple times in the original trilogy. And I believe also in the prequels where they captured this angle of Jabba's palace. Whereas in the Clone Wars show, they, uh, a lot of the scenes are Jabba's palace in a different angle. So there's a few more of the towers you can see, but yeah. It was really nice. Again, interesting to see that Lego is able to build this, uh, build something recognizable with so few parts. Day 19, I think, was an interesting one as well. Oh, yeah, it was uh, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Episode 6, Luke Skywalker, even with the black hand glove. So, really nice. Glad to have another Luke Skywalker. I don't have that many Luke Skywalkers, so just to have another minifigure in general is really nice. Uh, day 20 was yet another build. This one is a little bit disappointing, I felt. It's a dare, it's a uh, desert skiff, I mean. Uh, again, it's something recognizable, built with so few parts, but I felt like of all the things to have built, I felt like this one was probably the lamest of all of them. <laughs> but I can understand why. The theme of this box was Hoth, Tatooine, and Naboo. Which is interesting because honestly I haven't seen that much stuff from Naboo. Which is this middle section I think was supposed to be. But it's interesting that yeah they they really focus on Tatooine and that Hoth. But not, not Naboo. Alright day 21. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said I could date this box. So this is a movie style clone before. Or er, clone. Stormtrooper before the most recent ones that have the dual molded helmets. So this Stormtrooper was first seen in the Rogue One set. I believe it then came out later than that, but only for two years. And then I think in 2018, the Lego Switch did the dual molded helmets. So I don't know. The more I look at these helmets over the dual molded, I'm starting to prefer these ones. Let me know in the comments below which Stormtrooper helmet you like more. The Rogue One style? Or the dual molded helmet. So let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, and then we're getting really close to the end. Day 22. And then after this we'll talk about the other stuff. So this will actually be somewhat of a long video. Uh, but yeah. Day 22. We have a. What I thought was going to be a Lambda shuttle. A Lambda, cla a Lambda class shuttle actually turned out I believe this is supposed to be a sentinel class just because of how long it is um it was, it's still really nice though I yeah I've seen these winged parts used for the lambda so that's why I thought it was going to be one of those as well but 
it's interesting to see a Sentinel. I almost just tried to put that back in the box. I wanted to keep that out. Day 23 was another interesting one. And then right after this one, we only have one more. We have a sled. A very... Of all of the things in here, this is like the biggest build. I mean, in terms of just its actual size when you build it, I think it actually uses the most amount of parts, but I could be wrong. But the things I'm most interested in about the sled are the hockey sticks that they use for the sled part and this uh, sack piece that can be used on minifigures. Those are my favorites. I think this is supposed to be a hockey hut. Uh, actually, I think you could use this as a hockey puck, but I don't think that's the purpose of it. I could be wrong. And finally, day 24 has one of the more most unique minifigures that I will now have in my collection. We have Snowman Chewbacca <laughs> with a stud shooter bowcaster. I actually really do like the stud load. I, I do like this bowcaster being stud, being able to shoot studs. I feel like that gives a lot more, definitely a lot more play feature to this, but I think it may not look as accurate, but I mean, you can now have in your mocks Chewbacca shooting stuff with studs. So that's, I don't know. I felt like that was really cool. And then just seeing the Chewbacca build or Chewbacca minifigure in all white looks really nice. Um, the only thing I can say that the criticism I have of this is just the fact that his, uh, ammo belt is in green and red and stuff. You wouldn't be able to pull it off of using this Chewbacca in like, uh, maybe serious mocks just because of that. But besides that, I think this is awesome. I'm glad this is the last build of the advent calendar. So. Uh, I will now switch us over to looking at the bags that I received from the secondhand Lego shop. Alright, hopefully the camera will be able to pick up all of this. So starting with these bags now, we're going to open this one first. The random parts bag. Just because I feel like there's a few things in here I really want to show off. And I want to save the minifigures until after this, so... Here is one of the most satisfying sounds I think a Lego fan can hear. The sweet sound of just hearing Legos fall off, fall out of a bag, and now the sweet sound of moving them around. So, some key parts I wanted to just highlight is this part in particular. This is the last of these that I needed to have gotten so I can build the Tri-Droid. Uh, custom design that we had designed on the stream a while ago. The only problem is I still don't have a few of the parts. This, this, the shop that I got this all from did not have the other parts that I needed. Unfor so unfortunately, I still am not able to 100% build that yet. Um, a few other interesting parts is there's this stickered slope that I found. I'm not sure where the sticker comes from, but I thought it looked cool. Um, there's a lot of these sand blue parts. This one has a caution sticker on it. There's these two uh, sand blue slopes that I believe were used for the 2005 uh, Vulture Droid, which is why I grabbed them. I might have two more of these, but I'm not sure. I uh, got some cockpit window parts. This one is from Palpatine Shuttle, if I remember right. So this is a nice part to have because I actually like that one. Uh, this is a unique cockpit dome I've seen. I don't think I have in my collection yet, so I picked it up for that reason. And here's like a, a car part. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming car part because of like the angle it has here for like the wheel to be able to fit into the uh, wheel. wheel. Um, but I thought it was a unique part that I might be able to manipulate to be something else and not only just be used on a car. And the last part I'll show off uh, is just more of these, number three, as I drop it, number three elbow joints or whatever they're called, or uh, Technic Axle Connectors. I need a whole lot of these for the Hellfire Droid Mock. And I believe my mother and I were able to find five more of these. So we're getting closer, but I still need quite a few. So let me slide all this stuff out of the way. Uh, 
Oh, one last part I'll showcase. I, I just thought it was funny. When I first saw this part, I thought it was going to be an actual R2 body, like with printing and stuff on it, but no. It's just a plain cylinder, which is fine. I can use that for something. Yes, let's now look at the mini figures we got. So, like I said earlier, at least I think I remember I said saying this earlier, this main, there's mainly stormtroopers in here. So, the main minifigure in here, and some of you might think I'm crazy for getting these, is the Rebel movie, not Rebel movie, the Rebel show style of Stormtrooper. So, this style of Stormtrooper is seen in the Rebels cartoon show. Um, I got a lot of these just because I feel like eventually I will be making mocks from the Rebel show. And, excuse me, to better capture what I want the art style to look like. Oh, excuse me. I will definitely need more of these, actually. So, currently I only had four. Now I have, I believe, eight. Let's go through this. Two, four, six. Okay, seven. No, I was right, eight. So I believe that would have been two of those battle packs worth of Stormtroopers, which would which was an awesome battle pack back in the day. The only issue it had with it is just being in the Rebels style. A lot of people don't like the Rebel style. Here are the uh, plates the shop used to hold the minifigures on. I mean, it's always nice to get more plates, so I'm not complaining there. Uh, the next Stormtrooper we got is another one of those uh, Rogue One styled Stormtroopers, which is nice. At first, they only had uh, the helmet. Well, so the story behind this guy is so they were selling just a helmet by itself. Uh, I, gra I got it, and then uh, it turns out I had the body for it. And actually, that was for one of these Rebel styled. So I have an extra helmet now, I'm pretty sure. So that's actually really nice, though, to have extra stuff like that, because eventually I can then probably find the torsos and stuff for them so uh the next common figure i got are two of these first order stormtroopers which is nice because i recently just put up all my first order stormtroopers onto a base plate and saw that i need quite a few more in order to accomplish a platoon of first order stormtroopers so getting two more is awesome uh the next most common thing is they actually had two more they had two of these death watch mandalorians which is nice one thing you might be noticing is all of the heads underneath are just these plain black heads. I switched these out. When I had purchased this, they had like the Mandalorian styled head for these guys. The Stormtroopers I all just showed had the angry clone face. So I am the I am the one who added the black head. So that's why they might either look better or worse, depending on your opinion. Uh, but yeah, they, they came fully built. They had their jet pack and everything. Only I the only thing all all these figures were missing were just weapons, but that is totally fine with me. Um, just trying to fix a few things I knocked over. Last full minifigure I got was another bomb squad trooper. Um, this should be all the bomb squad troopers I need. The only thing I now need are the our customs, uh, most likely custom clone army custom helmets for these guys. If I can, that way I can uh, continue the style of uh, Clone Wars. Uh, P1 clones that I'm trying to go with, but either way, it's awesome to get another bomb squad trooper because now I believe I have the entire squad, so I will never need any more bomb squad troopers. <laughs> they were okay in the show, but they literally only showed up in I think two episodes, so they're not a clone that you need a whole lot of, and yet they showed up in a battle pack. Why, Lego? Why? <laughs> but yes, let's move on to the random things that you see left over here. So I believe there's nine. I could be wrong, though. But I got quite a few, like I said, probably nine of these Clone Wars-styled Senate Commando helmets. Uh, really nice. I actually really like these. I thought it was funny that the Senate, Senate Commandos were using the same style of armor as Clone Troopers in the show, and that's not actually the case in the lore. They're not supposed to be using the same armor, but they look exactly the same, so... But I really like these helmets. I wish Lego would make the uh, super fancy one, fancy uh, Senate Commando helmets that have like the extra like, I don't know, they look like they're wearing like a, a broom 
on their head or whatever, like the end of a broom. But yeah, I like these. I'm glad I, I'm glad they had some. The next one I really got was a lot. I mean, a lot of Geonosian heads because they had a lot, and I grabbed them all. <laughs> but I'm really excited for these, um, mainly because this head has only shown up, and I believe only two, maybe three sets. So the fact that this shop had so many of them, I was not going to let them go by. The only thing I now need to do for them, obviously, is get their torsos, get their legs, and I will probably get half of them wings and half of them not. That way, the half without wings can uh, pilot their uh, fighters, and the other half can then be on the ground. The last thing I got from that shop are a bunch of Greedo heads that I'm going to use to make random Rodians in the background of Mox and or eventually Rodia itself. Only thing I need to do in order for me to do Rodia though is I'm going to need to like, get a lot more of the darker green color of the Rodian head and maybe get a few custom colored Rodian heads. So that will definitely be a long term project, like a project that doesn't happen for a long time. But I'm starting to collect things just in case. Because I mean, I can now make a few Rodians just for the backgrounds of Mox, which will be awesome. But. There's probably the most, the thing I'm the most excited about besides all of these minifigures. Let me cut here, and when we come back, I will have the acro mill containers, and we will open them and see what they look like. All right, so this is what they look like. Brand new Acro Mill containers because they've been sitting in those boxes since Thanksgiving. Uh, <laughs> so yes, we got the small drawer and we got the large drawers, which is funny because if you do, I think there's a way to split it so you could technically make the large ones into two small ones, but I would never do that. I don't, one, you'd have to buy the separator and two, when I'm putting stuff in the large bins, it means I either have a crap ton of it like the Technic pins and stuff, or they're just really large plates or bricks or something. So this will be very awesome because tomorrow, actually, tomorrow at, I want to, actually, I'll, I'll leave the date ambiguous until I actually uh, publish the stream, but tomorrow's stream will be another sorting stream. I've actually almost finished just sorting bricks out on my own using these uh, Stereolite containers I have back there. I never knew what I was going to put them in them, but now I know. So these are actually going to be our slopes. And that is the last category in phase two that we need to sort out before I need to then go back to phase one and un disassemble some set. Well, yeah, disassemble some sets and sort out sets that are in bags. That way we can then get back into phase two and then eventually get to phase three. So, yep, these are really nice. It seems... These couple of drawers have some extra bits of plastic on them. That, that's no problem. I can just rip those off or cut them off. Yes, this Christmas has been very awesome. I'm very thankful to my family for supporting this hobby of mine and helping me get all this stuff. <laughs> Again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. Hope your Christmas and or your holidays were and are awesome, depending on when you watch this video. Most likely awesome, are, will have been awesome because of when this video goes out, because I'm recording on Christmas Day, and we'll most likely get this video out on Christmas Day. Um, be ready to see yet another uh, Lego Room related video next week. Like I mentioned earlier, my father and I were working on something that we will actually most likely finish today, if we feel like doing finishing them today. And so I will have a really awesome video involving minifigures. So be ready to check that out. I will also eventually make a video of how I do my sorting. That way it makes more sense for the, those of you who are interested in sorting your own collection and have the resources to do 
do it in this kind of manner. But yeah, thank you everyone. This has been Clone Plays. Remember, every clone has its roots in the original. I apologize that this video felt like it went kind of long. I will do my best to cut it down in editing. I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.